Thinking about moving to Tampa or the St. Petersburg area and trying to figure out which area to move to? Well, in this video, I'm going to discuss just that. This is everything you need to know about Tampa versus St. Pete, and let's get to it. I'm Emily. I'm a licensed real estate agent here in the state of Florida and I live in the Tampa St. Pete area and this channel is dedicated to all things living, working, playing and sleeping, eating, not to mention this crazy and wacky real estate market in the central Florida area. So if that resonates with you, please hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. That helps me out a lot. And don't forget, you can always drop a comment below. I love to hear from everybody. And if you have a question, I will respond as fast as I can, I promise. And as always, if you are looking to relocate to central Florida, I can't help you if you don't reach out to me. My links are below. You can contact me via email, or you can also jump on my calendar. The link is below as well. And we can have a 30 minute conversation and discuss your relocation plans. I'd love to speak with you. Okay, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about Tampa versus St. Petersburg and everything you need to know. A lot of people that come to me and ask questions when they're looking to relocate to our area is, you know, what's the difference between Tampa and St. Pete and, you know, the good and the bad and and basically how to decide which area to focus in on. Because as some of you have known from watching some of my other videos, I might talk about Tampa, but there's some very good neighborhoods sprinkled throughout Tampa as well as St. Pete. So even though we call it Tampa St. Pete, it's really two different cities. So it's really going to be determined upon what your lifestyle is like and what you are looking for in a neighborhood. So which is going to be best for you, Tampa or St. Pete? So let's break it down a little bit. Where's your job? Where are you commuting from and to and from? Uh, are you remote? Are you relocating for a job? I get a lot of people that are coming here, obviously re relocating for a job, and that's my first question. Where are you working? Are you working out of the house? Are you working in downtown Tampa? Are you working in downtown St. Pete? Are you working in Sarasota? I've had to explain to people that you can work in Sarasota and if you live in Wesley Chapel, that's going to be almost a two hour commute. So it's really important to get this information and put it through, you know, your own Google search here on Google Maps and map it out. Like if you have an idea of an area of where you're going to be working and you really want to see what areas do, do yourself a favor and open up that Google map of Tampa and map it out. I can also help you with that. I try to, you know, walk people through that process as well, because really you've got to deal with a lot of commuter traffic here. We have grown really fast in the past two years and our infrastructure is just jam packed. Not to mention, if you're going between St. Pete and Tampa, you've got three major bridges. The first major bridge is in the middle, which is the Howard Franklin 275, Interstate 275. That is gonna be where the most traffic is coming in and out of. And if there's a wreck on this bridge, you are screwed. <laughs> so it is really important to understand, you know, the commuting. But also, what is your lifestyle like? Are you a beach person? Are you a nature person? Do you need a biking trail? Do you need a running trail? Are you into water sports? Are you into fishing? What is, what is your deal? So what is it that you're looking to do when you're not working? What, is, what do you, your family, your partner, what is it that you're looking uh, to have around you? Are you willing to commute a little bit for the beach? Are you willing to commute a little bit for an amazing biking trail? Those are things you have to kind of determine on your own. And if we're talking along the lines of lifestyle, there's a couple of distinct differences between the downtown life of Tampa and the downtown life of St. Pete. Now, Tampa is really starting to grow its downtown presence. There's a lot of wonderful things down there. I live in Tampa, so I, I end up down in that area frequently on the weekends. There's the Riverwalk. There's also Armature Works that is connected to the Riverwalk. There's Curtis Hickson Park along the river. And then there's also obviously our Amelie Arena where our lightning is playing. Woo, come on, one more Stanley Cup win. Not to mention, as you go further down the river, there's Channelside District, which hosts Sparksman's Wharf, which is another great little area with kind of an artificial lawn. They've, a lot of times they'll project movies and certain events down there, and they've got a ton of great little restaurant type uh, little 
It's almost like a food truck, but they're connected. They don't go anywhere. So they're like little vignettes. Not to mention you also have a lot of bowling and some shopping and all that. So we've really run the gamut in Tampa as far as things to do in our downtown area. The issue is though, we're spread out. Unlike St. Pete. St. Pete, everything is really close and centralized from Central Avenue pretty much. From the St. Pete Pier that was just built a couple of years ago, that was a $92 million project and it is amazing. And there's lots of fishing and restaurants and things to do on that. So if you take that pier and you go all the way down Central Avenue, you're going to run into, again, amazing restaurants and museums and all sorts of different culture and, and it's all walkable. So in Tampa, you can't really walk from say Armature Works down to Sparkman Wharf because that's just way too much. We do have things like the water, the pirate water taxi that I've mentioned before. It's one of my favorite things to do, as well as the Ebor trolley. Um, it's actually, I think the downtown trolley, but anyway, that's free and that can take you up and down because when it's hot, like it is now, you really don't want to be doing too much crazy walking in Tampa. St. Pete can be just a tad cooler and you can bike and walk a little bit more freely. So if that's the lifestyle you're looking for, where you want kind of that condo living, you wanna maybe have a view of the water, whether it's the river or the bay, or, or even you know down in St. Pete, the pier and all that down there by the Vinoy on Beach Drive, there's amazing restaurants in St. Pete. And again, like I mentioned, you're gonna see be hearing music coming out of these bars and restaurants on an ongoing basis and some of the best food, I think, in our area. And really kind of an eclectic vibe. So. Tampa has its own vibe, St. Pete's got its own vibe. St. Pete, very diverse. You're gonna have a lot more of that culture, a lot more of that melting pot feeling. Tampa is still kind of like old town, old Tampa. We have people that have lived in Tampa for hundreds of years, decades of families, right? Just generation after generation. Lots of Italian Americans, lots of Cubans and Puerto Ricans and this amazing rich culture as well, but it's that old school kind of culture. So, and because I think we're more spread out, we're, we don't have as huge a community vibe, in my opinion, as St. Pete, but you'll have to check that out for yourself. But again, condo living, waterfront views, and lots of activities for your nightlife. If that's your thing, St. Pete is probably my number one choice, but Tampa is not far behind. If you're into water sports like me and my partner, you know, it, that's really a hard call because the thing about Tampa and St. Pete, we have canal communities. I personally have a condo on a canal community and it is the best. It's really gonna be hard for me to live anywhere else that doesn't have water. Um, my boat sits outside my condo, um, you know, in the water, and then there's a slip, a sling, a part of this bridge, and it takes you from the fresh water to the canal that's got, you know, the ocean water, and you can take that canal all the way out to the bay. And we just have so much fun being able to do that without having to take a boat at a dry dock and put it on a trailer and then take it to where we want to go. We can go anywhere at a drop of a hat. So that really works for our lifestyle. We also love to kayak in Whedon Island, which is over in St. Pete. But down the street, I've also got a little nature preserve that I can kayak out of. And in my canal community, I can stand up paddleboard and kayak at any time. Also, just to add more to it, my boyfriend will fish pretty much daily after work off of our boat in the freshwater. So if that's something that appeals to you, I can speak from experience that Tampa has that all over the place. But St. Pete does as well. St. Pete has its own beautiful canal community, some of which I've mentioned in other videos, and I'm gonna continue to show you some of those areas as well as we continue with more videos. Um, but there's also Whedon Island that I mentioned before. I really love kayaking there. I always see dolphins. I've even seen baby sharks. It's been really a cool process. And let's not forget boating. There are so many areas that you can boat around between St. Pete and Tampa. That's something that um, my boyfriend and I have been doing lately. We've been looking at charts to see how far is it gonna take us from our house to get over to St. Pete. And so that's a really fun thing for us to do. And if your boating is high on your list, you most certainly can boat between Tampa and St. Pete. And there's also lots of marinas that will let you 
you know, park your boat for a very small fee, or sometimes they've got free spots. You can gas up, and a lot of times there's some sort of tavern or restaurant there as well, and it just makes the whole experience of boating for the day that much richer. I would lose my driver's license if I didn't talk about the fact that we have four championship teams. Now, I don't know a ton about sports, so I think we're all four are champions, but you have to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But I know the Rays, we've got the Rays, we've got the Rowdies, we've of course got the Lightning, and we've of course got our, our Bucks. So we're called Champa. Hashtag Champa. So that is another reason to, <laughs> to decide between Tampa and St. Pete. The Rays and the Rowdies live on the St. Pete side. The Tampa Bay Bucks and the Lightning, they're over here on the Tampa side. Emily Arena and of course, you know, the Buccaneer Stadium. So when things are going on with the games and whatnot, it, there's so many activities. Right now we're you know playing, we're in the playoffs for the Stanley Cup Finals, and outside of uh, the Lightning Stadium or Amelie Arena, I should say, they have Thunder Alley, and you can basically because tickets are so expensive, you can park your little self in your little lawn chair there with your cooler with everybody else and they project the game on the big screen. I mean, how cool is that? And even during the rain, you see people out there having a great time. So we really enjoy our sports teams here, and I think you will as well. Beaches. Well, St. Pete's really got us on the beaches. You don't have too many beaches on the Tampa side. Uh, we have to you know, head west if we want to go to St. Pete Beach, which is, of course, the number one beach in the nation. It's not necessarily my favorite beach, so comment below if you've got your favorite beach and I'll share with you mine. But, it, you know, again, we've got a menagerie of beaches to choose from, all the way from the top there in uh, the, the northwest part of town. We've got, uh, you know, Sunset Beach over in Tarpon Springs, then you go all the way down to Honeymoon Island. And then, of course, you've got Clearwater and then Sand Key that bleeds into Bel Air Beach. And then you've got Indian Rocks and Redondo. I'm not sorry, not Redondo, sorry. Indian Rocks, Reddington. And then you've got Madeira, Johns Pass, and Pass a Grill. Not to mention, I love of Terra Verde. And at the end of Terra Verde is, of course, Fort DeSoto, another really amazing beach. So it's really depends on what kind of vibe you want. Do you want to be around a ton of people? You know, some of those popular beaches are going to be packed and parking can be a problem. But if you're like me, I like to find beaches that nobody knows about. And that right now, my boyfriend and I are discovering where we, what beaches we can get to via boat that nobody knows about. That's another little trick. It's so fun. And then you have your own little private, like Gilligan's Island. <laughs> beaches, we are known for our beaches. So find your favorite. And both Tampa and St. Pete are really becoming, you know, a hotbed of breweries. You know, I end up going over to Dunedin with my friends and we brew hop quite frequently. But then we also in Tampa have Cigar City Brewery and there's Florida Avenue Brewery that I absolutely love. So if, if brewskis are your thing, you know, we've got that in spades here as well. Between Tampa and St. Pete, you can't go wrong and you can have a good day of discovering all the great breweries that we have to offer. And I've also talked on several videos too about the festivals. We've got a festival for everything. Seafood festival, festival, beer festival, hamburger festival, wing festival, rock shrimp festival, you name it, we have a festival. And they really bounce between Tampa and St. Pete. St. Pete, I think, St. Pete and that side of town usually has a lot more of the seafood festivals, everything, because most of the areas that host these festivals usually have waterfront views. The Vinoy Park, or even over in Safety Harbor, uh, they, there's a marina over there that has this big open lawn and they have tons of festivals. Don't forget Dunedin has a festival like every weekend. So there's lots to do on the west side of town. But in Tampa, we have an area called Curtis Hickson Park and there's always some big festival going on there. But our biggest festival, our number one festival is the Gasparilla Festival. And Gasparilla is the third largest festival in the country. So check it out. You might wanna do a little research. I'll put some links below as well. You should come out. It's one of my favorite festivals, especially because it's in the cooler time of the year and we can wear jackets. It's fun. Now I'm finally getting to it. Let's talk, let's talk some neighborhoods because it is very different to live on the Tampa side versus the St. Pete side. And in Tampa, St. Pete in general, no neighborhood is alike. 
There are some development communities that you get that cookie cutter kind of vibe with all the community features. For sure, you're gonna have that. There's no new construction within the city limits of Tampa. Most of the new construction homes are outside of town in Wesley Chapel, Odessa, Trinity, all up in that northern region. But also in our southeastern region, in Riverview, Brandon, and then now we're hearing a lot that's going on with Ruskin and Apollo Beach and Parrish and Palmetto. Those areas are starting to really boom with new construction communities because they have land. In the Tampa city limits and even St. Pete, because St. Pete is so dense, densely populated, there's no space to build these new communities. But what people are doing and developers are doing is they're taking lots, larger lots, demolishing if there's like a little house on it, and they're making those into maybe two, three, four uh, little bungalow homes or duplexes. So sometimes you can get lucky with new construction in the west side of town, um, but mainly you're gonna be focusing on North Tampa or Southeast Tampa for the new construction. But if you're into it, Tampa is a really old city. So you're gonna have a lot of those mid-century homes and 1900 homes, um, especially in St. Pete. Lots of historical districts in St. Pete. Tampa has its own historical district down in Ybor City, as well as Tampa Heights and Seminole Heights. So if you're looking for that kind of culture, those kind of brick lane streets and you know craftsman style homes, mid-century homes, you're gonna find that in more of our historic districts. But there are some areas that are really hot, hot, hot. People are constantly wanting information on or wanting to move to, but you know, when it's a hot area, the prices are hot. So South Tampa right now, I would have to say by far, is probably one of our hottest, most sought after neighborhoods, probably second, or first to West Chase. West Chase is probably the second most desirable neighborhood that people talk about. And some of the areas in South Tampa consist of Davis Island, Hyde Park, Palmasia, Bayshore Beautiful. And then as far as those historic districts, you've got Tampa Heights, Seminole Heights, uh, as well as all that area north of the Riverwalk. Very cool little eclectic area, if that's your thing. In some of those urban walkable areas, that's gonna be Channel, the Channel Side District, downtown Tampa, Harbor Island. And within St. Pete, you're gonna again have, for downtown, you're gonna have the condo living, and you've got the historic Old Northeast and the Coffee Pot Bayou. And then you've got Snell Isle, and the Venetian Isles that's got beautiful, you know, canal communities and waterfront uh, property. You've also got the Grand Central District that I mentioned before, that's gonna have a little bit of mixed use where you're gonna have condos, maybe some duplexes or townhomes, and maybe some like those old uh, mid-century homes surrounding it. There's also an area called Rosen Park, a little bit more historical. And then of course the historic Kenwood that I've talked about before. And if you're looking for, you know, that beach life and you wanna be up close and personal to it, you're gonna to go to areas like Terra Verde, which is at the bottom of St. Pete. There's also the Pinellas Point that I'm starting to, you know, kind of talk to people about as well. You've got Jungle Terrace, that's really great. And then if you head again a little bit more west, you're gonna be looking at Pasigril and Bay Pines, uh, all the way up to South Pasadena Beach. There's a lot of little hidden treasures in there that are not just the St. Pete, the Clearwater, you know, the Reddington, um, that sort of thing. There's a ton of little beach communities within the bigger beach communities, if that makes sense. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you know I've talked a lot about Tarpon Springs and Dunedin, Palm Harbor and Safety Harbor. Again, you really can't go wrong with those communities on the west side of Tampa, especially if you're trying to get closer to the beach, but you might not be able to have that beachfront property kind of thing, but you can get very close to the beach. But I also still love the east side of Tampa where you've got Seminole Heights and Tampa Heights all along the river there. You really can't go wrong, but it's gonna be a little bit more urban feel. So it really depends, again, going back to your lifestyle. And then let's, let's again address St. Pete. So in St. Pete, like I've mentioned, you've got that downtown condo living, water views kind of lifestyle or you go a little bit north into the historic Old Northeast and the Coffee Pot Bayou up near Snell Isle, and you've got a lot more of that water life, a little bit more biking, but you're gonna be an Uber ride downtown. And then even South St. Pete at the Pinellas Point, it's starting to get 
on people's radar a little bit more. And there's an area called Jungle Terrace and Jungle Prada, which I'm gonna do a video about. And then as you even go a little bit over to the west side of St. Pete, of our tip there, you're gonna head into South Pasadena Beach and Bay Pines, all the way into the big um, you know, beach communities, as I say. And even inland from the beach communities, you can find really nice homes and pretty affordable in this market. So that's pretty much it as far as, you know, Tampa versus St. Pete. The biggest takeaways, in my opinion, are culture, diversity, and walkability. St. Pete has that in spades, if that's what you're looking for. Tampa, still diverse, not a lot of walkability, and Again, if you wanna be closer to the water, you're gonna be wanting to be over in that St. Pete area or that West Tampa area. But if you like city living, downtown Tampa, Channel Side should be high on your list. And don't forget South Tampa and Davis Island and Harbor Island, those areas are really hot, hot, hot. Condo living, great views. And then if you're lucky, you can find yourself a nice single family home in South Tampa and you're good as gold. So again, Appreciate you visiting my channel and listening to this content. I hope it resonated with you. If it did, please hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. And please hit me up in the comment section if you've got a question or if you've got something to add. Would love to hear from you. And as always, if you want a little bit more information on any of these areas that I've mentioned and you're contemplating relocating to our area, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can, you can hit those links below. You can either hit me up over email or you can jump on my calendar and we can talk for 30 minutes about what you want to do. I'm here to help you out. All right, guys, until next time, have a good one. Bye-bye.